Welcome to Rustic Cottage Co. I'm Julie and I hope you like my Facebook page Rustic Cottage Co, my group Rustic Cottage Co and my YouTube channel Rustic Cottage Co. This video is to inspire you. Please give the thumbs up, like, tell your friends and pass the word on. That will help my business. I much appreciate the time you're taking to enjoy this video. Please keep watching and let me know what you think in the comments and thank you again for watching Rustic Cottage Co from Julie. Have a great day. Enjoy the movie. So I have this old rustic trunk. I've completely cleaned it down. I'm right now just pulling off anything that's loose on it. and making sure that the top is completely smooth as it can be for something that's old and rustic. I'm not going to do a base coat because this wood, this rusty metal and everything that's on here is base enough to wet distress back and would look beautiful. I've already started the uh, inside, as you can see. I've started painting and I will be doing a clear coat on top of that and uh, doing the top as well, making sure I paint all that completely. So that I will be getting on to next. Well, not looking too great right now. It's in the sink because it needs a good scrub, but I found this in the shed of the new place and well I don't know if I can pick it up it I don't know if it's got it's got a lot of grunge on it it's gonna see if it's got all kinds of things going on here um, not sure why a bird house weirdness I don't even know what grunge that is but anyway it's a little bird house and I'm going to give it a good scrub and it's free. So love that because I'm always excited to use anything free and um, just upcycle and see what I can make with it. So I'm going to have some fun with this. Let's see what I can do. Let's get scrubbing. Now this one was hung up in the yard and it's so cute. So I'm going to have some fun with this one too. Had one of the signs came up. So I'm going to see what I can do with this one. Maybe put that back on where it goes here. Stick it back on and clean it all up first and go from there. I have the first coat on. It's covered pretty nicely. So I'll just be doing a touch up for the second coat. I used a different brush and it did go on quite heavily and nicely. But it did use a lot of paint so I'll think about whether it was worth using that brush or not and contemplate that in my mind. Anyway, um, on this piece it's a very old trunk as you could see and I am expecting and already have, if I show you especially here, a lot of bleed through. And as I say I was expecting that. We have very old trunk, canvas material, old leather that usually seeps um, through and metal and then dark wood with heavy stains on and then on top of all that it was lots of rust on this piece so this will be a good way to show you how i deal with um, bleed through of different kinds as i go along on this piece um, and how i can still wet distress back and be able to deal with the actual bleed through. So we'll deal with that, I was expecting it, and you'll be able to see what I do. What do you think so far? My second coat was just a tiny touch up, it wasn't much. I still do have some bleed through, so we will deal with that after. Um, but right now, I'm going to let it all dry and then wet distress back to all the yummy stuff, the wood, the metal, the rust, anything with interest to bring back out this beautiful trunk. Now I haven't done the bottom and I usually do that last because I then decide whether I'm going to do it black 
or put wheels on it or whether to just carry on doing it white when I flip it over. That I decide later when it's all finished. So right now I'm just kind of waiting for it to dry and then we'll do some wet distressing. Well, this is now, it's not completely dry, but it is dry enough. And because it's fresh paint, it should be easy to wet distress. Wet distressing simply means using a wet, damp cloth to rub away back the water-based paint to reveal what's underneath. So you're just rubbing away detail to come back. And I'm just gonna go over all the metal, any of the rust, and just any of the detail. And as I say, it doesn't need a lot of hard work rubbing when it's fresh paint. And that's always the easiest time to wet distress. You don't have to, you can go back and wet distress days later, but you generally, because it's hardened, paint you have to just rub a little harder so I'm just going over all the detail and just around showing off the metal everywhere and any of the scrumptious rust we had going on so i'm going to try and find that if i can and get that back anywhere that's interesting detail. Just rub away to reveal whichever parts you want to reveal. And I find if you go, if you've got a line that way, if you go against the line, you get more interesting rubbing back. So just go against, don't go up and down with it, go sideways. So I'm going to just continue to do this. It's quick and easy, but I think you get the drift of what I'm trying to achieve. And certainly I wouldn't want to watch someone rubbing for 10 minutes doing the same thing over and over. So I'm just going to continue doing this, rubbing it all back and I'll let you know when it's finished and show you. So I've got the uh, first coat on both of these and uh, I'll be waiting for that to dry and put a second coat on and uh, then I'll do some wet distressing back. They're looking cute. So I painted up the uh, birdhouse and I painted up the little tiny store, country store. And if you remember these beads were hanging from, I believe, the birdhouse. So I painted up those and went distressed back on all of it. And uh, I will uh, put a clear coat on top of everything and those will be pretty much ready to go. And uh, Let's get them ready and display them nicely. What do you think? So I finished putting the clear coat on these and I'll show you which one I used in just a minute. I found a little bit of, if I can show it here, a little bit of yellowing, which does happen sometimes when you put a clear coat on. But this actual video is one of those that, because I'm using old wood stuff that's just, you know, almost been thrown away I knew there'd be some bleed through and we're going to address that once it's dry and then it'll bring you over here and if you see the trunk is almost finished it's got the clear coat on and we have a little of the 
the bleed through up here and a little bit of some coloring here and we're going to address that as i say once it is dry and i'm just going to bring you sorry over to here just because this is where i actually ran out of the um, clear coat um so i ran out of it but used it all up this is the brand i use um, for the clear coat it does yellow on old wood there's not many that don't and you'll be told and jump in a lot of people will say well with diy paint or with um, whatever paint and this paint they don't yellow no they may be better they may be quality maybe they don't yellow as much but i've never found one to be a hundred percent and i'm used to working with this and i work well with what i have and what i can get a hold of easily the DIY paint I have used, I have some, and it is one of my favorites. It's just a little expensive, especially to try and purchase it for Canada. And with everything that's happened in, um, with going on in life right now, it's been very hard to get over the border. So I only use what I call good quality paints that are good for the job that I find fun to work with. So the brands I use, I can usually get locally. So next we are going to do some black wax once this is dry. So I'm going to be putting a second coat on the beads and I figured I would do one more set. So if you don't, if you didn't remember, here's the beads. Um, I think they may be chestnuts. I'm not sure what they are. Anyway, I'm going to be um, painting a, a third set here and uh, and just paint them white all over and then paint a second coat onto the ones that I've already put the first coat on. And then we will work with these after. So I'm just gonna cover them completely with a smaller brush. While I'm doing this, I usually get it all over my fingers. I am sure there's an easier way I think some people put them on a tray or a plastic plate and just get the paint all in there. That might be another way to doing it, but this is fine. And then as I say, with the ones already done, just do a second coat. Covering them completely. And once all the beads have two coats on them, then I will wet distress them just slightly. I don't want them rough and completely. I just want a couple of them wet distressed. So I will do that after they've got completely two coats on them. So I'm gonna finish that off afterwards. You don't need to watch me doing all that. And then we'll get onto the next stage of those. Now, what I wanted to show you is how I deal with any yellowing, as you can see the yellowing, or if there's any bleed through. So I've got clear coat on top of here, which usually brings out the yellowing. So what I do with a small, smaller brush, I just go back in and cover the yellowing part only. And that works really well. Now you can leave it like that and just let it be. If you're just putting it in your home, it's a little decor. But if you are going to be cleaning it with a cleaner or some kind of washing it, wiping it, that kind of thing, then you'll want to cover this with a sealer again. Or like myself, if you're selling it, you again need to cover it with a sealer. So after you've done the white, you don't want to be putting back on top the clear coat again. What you want to do is go in with a white wax and that will then encourage it to stay white, give it a sealer and you're ready to go because you've got literally clear coat sealer on all of it and then you just did a touch up area here where you can just, once the paint is dry, 
just put a white wax on top of the area that did some bleed through. So I've got some here too. Quite a lot of the time the bleed through is where any of the uh, clear coat was heavy or if there's any bleed through from old wood that can also create it. So I'm just going over all the parts here that has got any kind of yellow in. And this is the same as what I will be doing with the, um, the, the trunk as well. The same concept. Let's see if there's any here. I don't think there is much on this one. And just a little bit here. And then some in here. And either try to remember where you repainted to put the wax on top or go do it as you go along so that you're not forgetting where it is. I find it's good enough as it is and um, without re-wet distressing back but um, that's up to you. And you. You don't really want to wet distress back where it's going to yellow that's for sure. So just if you dry brush on you get the whiteness and you still get the rustic look. So I'm going to do the same on the trunk and then put white wax over everything. So the last step before I do any staging, I'm going to be using some black wax. Now, I, so far, all my waxes are the same brand, which is the Bear brand. Um, I pick it up from Home Depot, which is just not far from me, easy to get. I've gotten used to how I work with it. I love using it. I kind of almost make it with a small kind of cheap brush, but I kind of make it almost like I'm painting or I'm etching or, but what I do is I use it to, <coughs> excuse me, I use it to just do some detailing work. So I'm gonna show you on here, and this is kind of what I'm gonna be doing with the other, birdhouse and with the uh, trunk. So we'll start with this one. So I get some of the black wax on, I find a corner and I wiggle it in. And then I pull it out from the corner towards the center or the edge and I just do a line. So it's almost like a charcoal or, or you know, if you're using a pencil or something like that. On the top here, I'm just going to kind of go along the edges. Again, along this edge here. You don't want too much. And then this corner bit here, you kind of want to just play with it a little bit and just get almost like a line that you're using a black color to just go around all the edging. Now, if you get corners like this, try and round them a little and give them some kind of shading is what we're trying to give some shading, some illusion. And the shading I'll show you here. I want to figure out where I want my light and where I want my dark. And what I do is I find wherever I am, there's a window. So there's light coming here from a window. So I actually have a natural shade in here. So I'm gonna work with what's in front of me rather than make it up as I go and just create that shade, that shadowing, and then just use your fingers to just soften it out and around the edges and just shadowing with your fingers, with the, uh, the brush and just try and get it a little bit at a peak at the ends rather than a harsh line and then again on this side here just can you see I'm just kind of shadowing the corner and doing that and then these corners I'm just kind of giving them an, a rounded kind of corner with shadowing on here I'll tip it this way so you can see I want again, I've got a corner here, so shadowing 
a corner doing a kind of an almost rounded edge and then just go along the edge and also because you've got the thickness here you want to go around the bottom as well not too much just have a play with it you're just putting a little definition in and that's all you're doing you can put as much as little as you want and just literally shadowing edges and corners and uh, just giving it that kind of shadow look do it again here we'll do this side we've got some corners here so just go around the corners and along the top and around this corner and we've got a line here too so just go along this line too and do a shadowing along that corner and then along here and again around here if you find you have too much you can use clear wax to rub it off or if you get it pretty quick, you can use uh, just your fingers to smooth it over. And if it's really a lot, then just get a damp cloth and start again. But make sure you do all that before you, uh, before it you know, dries and hardens. Now wax will take three days to dry, but it will take a complete good three months to cure. The difference between dry and cure Dry means it's dry to touch. Cure means it's dry throughout, hardened. It's as dry as it will get for that product and you now can start cleaning it. But only dry, you can't clean it. So if you want to sell or give away your piece before three months, let the person know that you're giving it to or selling it to, that it's all dry, it's all ready. But because it has wax on here, it's going to take three months to harden. So I would suggest you just dry dust for the first three months. And then after that, you can just wipe it down. But as this is a decorative item anyway, you don't need to do much more than a dry dust. But with the actual trunk that we're doing, which will be turning into a coffee table, obviously the top will want a good wipe down after a while. So after three months, they can use a damp cloth and just give it a good wipe down because they would be using it as a coffee table. So there's kind of a little bit tips and tricks. And as I say, I'm just gonna just do a little more here and then I'm gonna do the rest, but you don't need to watch me do it all but just go around the edges, any lines you can see and just giving it some shadowing and definition. Now I've gone in quite heavy there, so I'm just gonna use my finger just to soften it. And if I find that is still too much, just use a cloth and just rub. And if you find it's still too much, you can use a damp cloth. But that to me is perfect. And if you find the rubbing is uh, a little too harsh, you can always just pat like this. And again, we'll just do this piece here. Get in the top there, wiggle it in there and pull out. Wiggle it in there and pull out. Find your corners, soften the corners with some shadowing. Soften this corner. And this one here. And then just edge it to give it that line of definition. And then this is the last side so i'm going to finish it with you guys i don't know if you're a little bored on this or if you're enjoying it with me but i'm just going to finish this one so you can see the end result and uh, then i will do the other ones oops it's falling on me i'll do the other ones off the camera and then show you when it's all finished
If you want it to be darker or more, you can do more. It's up to you how you want the shadowing to be and how much and how little and all that kind of stuff. I'm just going to turn it around and just kind of give you a little bit of a look here if I can of the effect that we're getting here. So it's just got some definition around giving it the old look. If you want it to look vintage and really old then you could also add some brown but for this I, I don't think that's needed I'm just doing the black wax. So that's finished and we'll do a little bit of the trunk and then once I finish them all I'll stage them up and I hope you like. So I'm going to do some more wax of the black wax on here um, just to give you a little bit more of an idea. I'm obviously not going to do it all. And if you can see still, I have some yellowing and I've left that because I knew I'd be going in with the black wax. So this is another tip and trick that you can do. If you have a tiny little bit of uh, yellowing or discoloration or anything on a piece, you can always go in with um, a glaze, a wax or something and just go along it. It gives definition to the piece and it hides it completely. So I do that on any of the pieces that I know I'm going to wax it anyway. This is the same wax that we used for the bird houses, the burr, and it's a black wax. And I'm just dipping some in and I'm just literally doing some edging, some lines, going around any of the detail. So I'm going around any detail, any lines, metal, anything that needs some shadowing and some highlighting. So just going along And you can do as much or as little as you like. Use your fingers to bring it back or use a cloth. I do fingers. I like to get my fingers right in there. I, most projects, no matter how or what they are, I'm dirty by the end, but it's the texture, it's the feel, it's the getting right in there using natural things like your fingers. I find it gives me the the creative look I'm looking for and uh, we're literally using the brush to draw a line and to do some shadowing along the line now if you're doing complete shadowing choose which side of the piece is going to be where the light source is and then the other side will be where the shadowing is so for instance on here on this lock if we have some light coming in here which i do i have shadowing this side so you get some of the black onto your brush and you shadow this side completely doing a shadowing effect which is just giving it some shadow that's all it is it's that simple Put as much or as little as you want and just make sure you go completely all over this side. Now you don't want to just do this side so you get a tiny bit very thin layer of the black and you just do a small line on the other side. It's not shadowing like this side it's just a thin line to give definition so the shadow is over here and the thin line is over here so we've got the light source hitting it and this is where again the shadowing goes i'm just going to do one more um, i think you can see this one here and then i'll get on and finish this so I've got, again, my shadow now is this side. I know that because we did this one. So you're gonna do your shadowing. So it's getting more onto your brush 
and then really kind of shadow in pieces everywhere, the whole thing shadowed. And then get some on your brush, but make sure it's only a thin, tiny amount, thin line, so you're only doing kind of a line on this side. It's a definition line, not a shadowing. So you shadow here. But not here. And play with it, have fun with it. There's no right or wrong, just play with it until you like it. Step back every now and then, just make sure you are getting exactly how you want it to be. And you, you soon with it get kind of, you can be quick like this and still get the effect you want. But if you're not sure, then do it a little slower. All right, I'm gonna do the rest of this piece and then I can show you all finished. This will be the coffee table and we've got the decorations to go on top. I hope you like. Let me know uh, in the comments uh, if you love the look, if you love the decor on it, would you change it? Would you put something else on it? Is it a coffee table to you? Let me know what you think and give me the thumbs up. And next is the stage pictures I hope you like. I'm Julie from Rustic Cottage Co. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and uh, thumbs up. Thank you.